welcome to this episode of Chrissy's Cuisine. As promised, today we're going to make chicken cordon bleu, and I'm not talking about the stuff that you buy in the grocery store in the frozen section that basically is a chicken nugget that's stuffed with cheese. No, ma'am. We're going to make the perfect kind fresh chicken breast. We're going to use beautiful Canadian bacon, and I'll explain to you why we're going to use that, and we're going to top it with a gorgeous white wine and portobello mushroom sauce that is going to make you smile for days. So let's get started. First thing we're going to start with is chicken breast. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our sharp chef knife and we're going to cut through and make a slit all the way through. Essentially we're making a pocket. So what we want to do is have a nice pocket open there. See that pocket? We don't want to cut all the way through because we need this pocket to stuff everything with. We're going to do the same with our next piece. Again, use your fingers, get in there and make a nice little pocket that is perfect. After that, we're going to take our Canadian bacon. Now, typically, chicken cordon bleu is made with ham. Personally, I like to use Canadian bacon because it's smokier and it's a little bit thicker and to me it holds up better and just really puts that punch of flavor that we're really looking for. So what we're going to do is take one piece of Canadian bacon per chicken breast, slice that in half, and we're going to put this right in the center like this with the, out, with the round part on the inside. And next we're going to add our Swiss cheese. Now, I personally, right now, the Swiss cheese is in the freezer. Why? Why is the Swiss cheese in the freezer? Good question. The reason we put the Swiss cheese in the freezer before we make this is because we're going to pre-cook it in the frying pan, and if it's not frozen, all the Swiss cheese is going to melt before we actually start cooking. So we want to go ahead. We've got our oven set at 350 degrees. Turn on our burner. We're going to get our olive oil in the pan. That way we can brown the chicken breast first. So we're going to put, oh, probably three tablespoons of olive oil. Personally, I like to use a liquor pour on the top of my olive oil. And the reason I like to do this is it makes it to where you can control the amount of olive oil that's coming out a lot easier. Otherwise, you accidentally look away, you're dumping, you got a whole pile of olive oil. So get a liquor dispenser, put it on your olive oil, makes life so much easier. All right, now we're going to take our frozen Swiss cheese and I'm going to put in probably, oh gosh, like two to three slices in each one. Well, this is a smaller chicken breast, so really we're only going to be able to fit two in this. Keep our Swiss cheese, put it aside. And by the way, cheese does freeze beautifully. So you can freeze cheese, take it out when you're ready to use it. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna play Dr. We're gonna take our chicken breast and use a toothpick and we're gonna sew it up. The reason we wanna sew it up is we don't want all of our cheese to come flying out. And cooking. don't forget, by the way, when you're done, take the toothpicks out because we want to eat chicken. We don't want to eat wood. So we're going to seam this up nice and good like that. Same thing with the second piece. We're going to sew it up. Just kind of weave in and out like that. Close the gap. And there we go. They're all nice and sealed up. Now the second thing we want to do is we've taken two eggs that we've beaten and we're going to use this for our breading. So we're going to take our chicken, dip it in our egg mix, and then we're going to put it into our breadcrumb mixture. What I've done here is I like it to be a little bit crunchy, but I also like the seasoning of Italian breadcrumbs. 
So I've taken a 50-50 mixture of panko breadcrumbs and Italian breadcrumbs. So basically I put in about a half a cup to maybe a cup of each. I want to press the breadcrumbs on there nice. I've got the olive oil heated up. Put that right in our frying pan. Repeat with our second one. Put this right in our breadcrumb mixture so it's nice and coated. And we're gonna pop this in the frying pan. Now, gotta wash off my hands real quick, so just that. So now that we have this browning in our frying pan, the next thing we wanna do is start with our mushrooms. And if you've ever purchased mushrooms, as I'm sure you have, and you keep them, you take them home, you put them in the refrigerator, and in like four or five days they become all slimy. There's a reason why. Mushrooms have a 92, 90 to 92% water content. So they are full of water. If you keep them in their original wrapping, they're gonna get slimy. So when you buy them, what you wanna do is take a brown paper bag, or if you don't have one, just put a bowl with paper towels Put your mushrooms right in that bowl, cover them up, put them in the refrigerator. The paper towel is going to absorb all the moisture and you are no longer gonna have slimy mushrooms. Problem solved. Now there's been quite a bit of a debate about do you wash your mushrooms, do you brush them off? Personally, I like to brush them off to get the dirt off because Adding more water to them is not going to, it's going to inhibit them browning. And then we're going to take them, we're going to slice them up, we're going to cut off the end of it because we don't want that woody stem. And we're going to just slice them into nice kind of thick pieces. And I would probably use on this recipe about 8 to 10 nice sized mushrooms. So after we get our mushrooms all sliced up, nice and delicious, we're going to turn around and we've got a pan here. Let me just finish slicing these last two up. Perfect. These are good. We're not going to salt them. We're just going to leave them as is. And we've got a pot going right here. We're going to turn our pot on. We're going to get this on high. We're going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon of butter. I personally like to use butter, and the reason I like to use butter is because quite frankly, look, I'm not all organic and all natural and all that. I mean, I do like to know where my food comes from, but when I look at a thing of margarine and I can't pronounce half the ingredients on the back, I really don't wanna eat it. I know where butter comes from. It's cream, it comes from a cow. Use butter, people. So let's take our mushrooms put them into our pan with our butter, and we're gonna start browning them. Now in the meantime, let's go ahead and flip our chicken breast. See how nice and golden brown this is? This is exactly what we want it to look like. We're gonna brown off this side, and as our mushrooms are browning and getting all gorgeous, we're going to take our chicken breast we're gonna put them in just any baking dish that you've got. We're gonna take them and we're gonna put these right in the oven, again at 350 degrees. We're gonna bake these because, mind you, we've already cooked them for a little bit. We've cooked them on both sides to brown them. So we're really only gonna bake them for about 30 minutes. Now that our mushrooms are nice and browned, and I just lost one, so. There it goes. We're gonna add one cup of dry white wine. Make sure it's dry white wine. And the reason that we're gonna use a dry white wine is because we don't want the sweetness. This is a savory dish. And you know, and I always used to watch shows where they'd say, only buy a wine that you would drink. And I think to myself, that's kind of snobby, you know? But then I thought about it. You really do want to use a wine that you're gonna drink because it's gonna make your food taste that good. And the other thing is, is in a, and I'm sure you've seen this in the grocery store, they have cooking wines in the grocery store, 
they're not actually wine. They're a beer product because not all grocery stores can sell wine. So please avoid those as much as possible and buy a wine that you would like to drink because, hey, you might want to pour yourself a glass. So we're going to put our wine into our mushroom. We're going to turn this up, bring it to a boil. The reason we want to do this is we want to cook off the alcohol. We don't want people to get drunk eating their chicken. Get drunk by drinking a cocktail. Not eating food, okay, people? So let's get this going. We're going to let this cook. It's honestly going to take about 20 minutes for the liquor to cook off. This is going to reduce by half, and we're going to be perfect. So we're going to have this on high. Let it reduce by half. And now we're going to start on our broccoli. So what I've done here is I've taken a pot full of water. I put probably two inches of water in the bottom of the pot. I'm going to take our kosher salt, heavily salt it. And when I say heavily, I'm probably talking about, we're going to add about a tablespoon of kosher salt. And I'm not really big on cooking gadgets because really all you need is a chef knife. If you do not have one of these, I highly encourage you to buy it. It is a portable steamer, and it is fantastic. So we're going to open up the steamer. We're going to put it in the bottom of our pot. Now, I've already washed our broccoli. So we're going to take our broccoli, and we're just going to chop it up into nice bite-sized pieces. I like to cut it a little bit thicker than I normally would, um, only because when this cooks down, it's going to break apart, and you don't want to serve somebody just a little tiny piece. So if you kind of follow, if you see what I'm doing here, the joint of the broccoli, follow the joint. That way you've got nice, hearty pieces. And personally, I like the stem, so don't discard the stem. So we've got this coming up to a boil. We're gonna go ahead, add our broccoli to it, and then we're gonna take a lid after we get all of our broccoli in, and we're gonna cover this. Let me grab a lid. We're gonna let this steam, because that's all we're doing is letting it steam. We're gonna let this steam for 10 minutes. The thing is, is we don't want our broccoli to be mush. We want it to be nice, beautiful, green, crisp, tender. Now, most people, when they have broccoli, they'll make Broccoli and cheese sauce, which personally I love throw cheese on anything. You got a happy girl. But with this, we're going to make a really beautiful light sauce. And it's so simple and so delicious. You're going to absolutely love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some sour cream. We're going to add in about a quarter of a cup of sour cream. And then we're going to get our mayonnaise. And... Again, we're going to add in about a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise. I've got to get another spoon. We don't want to cross-contaminate. So we're going to add a quarter of a cup of our mayonnaise in. So what you're looking at is a 50-50 mixture of mayonnaise and sour cream. Then we're going to take our lemon, slice off our lemon in half. Hold your hand below the lemon so we don't get seeds in it. And we are going to juice one half of the lemon into our sour cream broccoli mixture. And as it would happen, I got seeds in there, but that's okay. Just get rid of them. We're going to whisk this together. And this sauce is so light and beautiful. And it not only works for broccoli but it also works for asparagus or any other light vegetable. And everybody that eats this, that everybody that I've ever made this for absolutely loves it. And it's just so simple. That's all it is. Sour cream, mayonnaise, a little bit of lemon juice. Perfect, you're done. Now we're gonna take a look at our mushrooms, which are doing beautifully. We've got our alcohol cooking down. And again, we want this to reduce by half. We want all the alcohol to cook off of it. And in about 10 minutes, this is going to be ready. All right, so now if you want to look at the mushroom mixture, as you can see, 
it is reduced by half, and this is exactly where we want it to be. But what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the heat off to the mushrooms, and we're going to slowly whisk in ice cold butter. This is about two tablespoons of butter, and we're going to do kind of like just a chunk or two at a time. The reason we're going to slowly whisk this in is we want the butter to create a gorgeous sauce. So as it melts off the heat, it's going to really incorporate and not separate from the sauce. So let's go ahead and add the rest of it in. Again, this is ice cold butter. We've got this going all nice and beautifully in here. And as you can see, the sauce has become a nice and velvety with a beautiful gloss on it. And that's exactly, exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and we're going to set that aside and our chicken is ready. Oh my goodness, chicken cordon bleu homemade. This is amazing. So we're going to take our piece of chicken, put it on our plate. We've got all this gorgeous, beautiful Swiss cheese. And we're going to pour, take our mushrooms, put some of them on top of this and pour some of our juice on that. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And we can't forget our broccoli. So we've got our broccoli right here. Take a nice piece of your broccoli out, which has been perfectly crisped. It's not overdone. It's just at the right consistency. We're going to take a little bit of this great sauce that we've made. It's so light and lemony, and it's so refreshing for summer. And we're going to lightly spoon some of that over our broccoli. And now let's give this a try. What do you think? Let's cut this open. Don't forget, we got the toothpicks in here, okay? So we don't want to eat toothpicks, but let's cut this open. My goodness, look at the Swiss cheese, the Canadian bacon. Okay, this was just too good to be sitting here. We got to give it a bite. A little bit of mushroom and a little bit of the, ooh, that looks like too big of a bite. The beautiful creaminess of this Swiss cheese. That nice, smoky, salty flavor of the Canadian bacon. The sweet richness of the dry white wine. And the chicken is so tender. Now let's give the broccoli a bite. Mm -mm. The broccoli is cooked perfectly. It's not soggy. It's not too underdone. It's perfect. That light lemon sauce on the broccoli. Talk about heaven in your mouth. Now, let me ask you. This took us less than 20 minutes. Well, about maybe 20 minutes to cook. Now, would you rather have this or the frozen corn? In the and when your family comes home and they come up for dinner, you can say, chicken cordon bleu with the beautiful broccoli and the light lemon sauce. And your friends and family are going to think they're at a five-star restaurant, but it's in your kitchen. So this is what I'm saying. You can make this. You can make this. It's so easy. It's so delicious. Very low in carbohydrates. If you're gluten-free, then just get a, a gluten-free breadcrumb. This is an easy, easy meal that is sure to satisfy every member of your family. And if you have company, you're going to look like a five-star chef. So enjoy Chicken Cordon Bleu. We'll see you next time.